Okay, good afternoon, um, all the participants on the Asia Virtual Academy. Uh, this is the fourth week of our Asia Virtual Academy uh, lectures, the fall lecture series. Okay, so today we are proudly um, uh, bring you the, the speakers from uh, National Pindong University, Dr. Arthur Yao Ting Zhen. Uh, Dr. Zhen is the Dean of the Office of International Affairs and a professor of Department of Applied Physics in National Pindong University. He was graduated from the Institute of Physics in Clemson Uni University, United States. And he's um, going to give us uh, the topic on the university social responsibility from the experience of NPTUs. Okay, um, okay, without further delay, um, I would like to leave the floor uh, to Professor Chen, Dean Chen, would you like to say hi to us? Yep. All right. Uh, uh, thanks for the introduction uh, uh, from the National University of Kaohsiung. Uh, I think it is my pleasure to be here to share the experience of MPTU to all the students. So should I start now? <clears throat> should I start now? All right. Okay. Uh, the topic that I'm going to share with you is the university social responsibility. And it is the uh, experience that we have here at National Pingdong University. I'm the speaker today. Uh, my name is Arthur Zheng, and I'm currently the Dean of the Office of International Affairs at National Pingdong University. So, okay. Uh, so to many of you, I think uh, it is all well known is that the university social responsibility has become one of the major issue at almost all the university in the world. And I think that mainly come from one of the, uh, or the, the theme from United Nation. Probably most of you heard about the SDGS and because of the SDGS, so, quite a lot of the university, they have to um, move from inside a campus and to off campus. So with a lot of engagement into the community. So I think today I would like to share uh, the topic, the university social responsibility, and I would like to follow uh, the, uh, the order that I prepare is uh, I was, of course, in the beginning, I will have some background. And then I would like to show you the transition of National Pingdong University from the beginning stage and to the current stage. And then I would like to share with you some of the project that the university have done uh, in the past few years and what we are currently working on. Of course, uh, due to the time limitation, I won't be able to speak a lot of, of all the USR project that we are currently running. So I can only show you one of them, all right? So, and then later on, uh, after that, I will share the uh, USSR of MPTU and related to the SDG educational goal. And then it will be the final remark of my talk. Okay, so here's the full forward that I would like to show you is that probably many of you have heard about the Stanford 2025. The Stanford 2025 is an educational goal proposed by the Stanford University of the United States uh, roughly around a decade ago. And in the project, mainly they have four, uh, I would say, uh, four loops or the four phase that they are trying to, to do the renovation in education. The first part is the open loop university. And the Open Loop University, basically, they are focusing on a lifelong, lifelong learning of a university. And then the second part is the pace education. The pace education is more or less that we say is to customize the education or a personalized education. And why, why they try to do things like this? Probably I can give you a little background is that most of the university... Uh, what we know today, what we know today is the university 
has a history of at least more than 800 years old. And most of the university, the department, uh, the concept of department was established nearly one century ago. And so all the ideas of the university have changed dramatically during the past 10, 20 years. So the university, the content uh, of the university that we are doing may not be able to meet the current needs in the, the fast growing technology or in a society. So the Stanford 2025 in the PACE education, they are trying to help the student to, uh, to understand what they need. And then the university will accommodate the idea of the student. And then uh, they can try to have some of the education they want instead of the the uh, the departmental idea, because most of the departmental idea that we have today, they are more focused in some of the area. And then the part C is the ex excess flips. Uh, it's mainly focusing on the competency-based learning. So it is not like before that, uh, in the university or in our educational system that the teacher is the focus and the teacher conveyed the knowledge to the student. But today, I think we would like to change this kind of, uh, this kind of learning model to the, what we call probably the student center learning. So all of the learning is to prepare the competencies of the student so that the student with the competency that they will be able to meet the future uh, challenges. And then the part C is the purpose learning, is the project-based learning. The project-based learning probably is the idea uh, proposed about, uh, I would say, uh, nearly like 25 years ago to 30 years ago. But I think this is still a very important idea for the student because the, the student need to have that kind of a problem solving uh, ability so that they will be able to face the future. So with the idea proposed by the Stanford University, the educational system in Taiwan or the Ministry of Education in Taiwan, they would like to also uh, do some sort of change in order to change the educational system here in Taiwan. So over here, the Ministry of Education started to ask all the university to have some reflection on the educational system that they are working on. And so that we propose the university learning ecosystem for Taiwan by the Ministry of Ed Education. And later on, it becomes the higher education sprout project that most of the university are working on now. Okay, so this is some of the uh, background that we will talk about. So that with the university learning ecosystem for Taiwan, actually what we try to do and we try to build the concept, the ideas of the university for the future. It's the future university. What should the future university be like in the future? And what can we offer the student? And then secondly, that it come up with the idea, the university should be a borderless university. In the past that we all know that university sort of like have a fence and all the students are learning inside the university that uh, uh, is, is the uh, is the on campus learning. So we talk about the border of the university, but now we would like to ex extend the learning field of the student, and that would go beyond the border of the university. So we try to see a borderless university for the student. And then the university, the co-learning university, because at the moment that we know that some of the learning, it cannot be only by the university or by the student only that we, after we walk out 
the border of the university, then we have to have some interaction or some engagement with the outside, whether it is the industry or it is the community that is nearby us. So I think this is the background that we are trying to say. So over here that we started to see some of the basic idea that we see about the university. In the past, the university is basically focusing on teaching only. But now we would like the university to do more than teaching. So we have to do a lot of research so that help the student to get uh, the latest knowledge of today. So then with the research result that the faculty and the student will be able to have a, a more uh, a developing knowledge of today. And then we'll, when we go out of the university, then we should try to have the collaboration with the industry and with others. And then the university start to bear what we call today the university social responsibility, uh, which is corresponding to what we understand is the CSR corporate social responsibility. So I think based on all of these ideas, the university is making a big change. So what we see today is the university one is only focusing on teaching and then university 2.0, we focus on teaching and research. And then later on we, with the development, the university move on to the university 3.0, then we have the teaching and research and plus the university then industry collaboration. And then currently that we see the uh, university 4.0 that we have not only the teaching research UI collaboration, but also with the university social responsibility. So this is the whole idea that we are talking about here. So National Ping Dong University, we try to bring up this kind of idea and then we try to integrate, integrate the university with the government, either it's the central government or is the local government. And then with the society and the school because the National Ping Dong University is famous for its college of education. So quite a lot of our uh, collaboration may be associated with some of the elementary school or kindergarten in the Southern region. So we are not only going to communicate with the society, but a lot uh, uh, in a great part that we will have connection with the schools in the, in the Southern region. And then the I, we stand for the international internationality and then the industry, because we understand that the university in order to move on to a future, uh, future trend, we need a lot of uh, the concept in the internationalization. So I think the internationality plus the industry is one of the key things that we should do for the university in the future, all right? So uh, when we set up this kind of idea at the National Ping Dong University, University 4.0, so then we start to integrate the teaching, the research and the university in the industry and the USR. So we try to cultivate the student, all right? To cultivate the student of talents, with the knowledge and technology. And then the research will help us to do the innovations of the knowledge and technology. And then with the association with the industry and community, then we can apply the knowledge and technology that we have. So we call it the application of the knowledge and technology with the industry and com community. And later on, when we talk about the university social responsibility, then we try to use the knowledge and technology developed in the university and implement it to the society to help the society to grow. Okay, so after years of the UGSI uh, project, 
in the past. So we start to have some of the reflections on what we have accomplished in the face of the UGSI, which is part of the, uh, the, the goal in the higher education sprout project uh, in the beginning phase. So over there that we start to ask ourselves some of the some of the questions. How many faculty we have at the university that will fulfill the university's social responsibility? How many? And how can we equip the student to implement the university's social responsibility? And who is the major workforce on implement implementing the university's social responsibility. And then the last one is what kind of reform in the curriculum is needed to help the student to carry out the task. Because over here that we can see that the UGSI, the whole idea of that is trying to bring the university with the government, with the society, with the school, with the industry. But actually that in the university, uh, not all the faculty member will uh, go hand in hand together to do all the things that proposed by the university. So we have to do a lot of measurement on the university's faculty so that to encourage the university faculty member to engage in this kind of uh, social responsibility work. And then the major workforce will be the professor or will be student. Because at MPTU, in my university, there is only about less than 400 faculty member. And including what I just mentioned is that not all the faculty member will join the, this sort of uh, social responsibility program. So actually there's a limited number of the faculty member will join the university social responsibility. So then when we talk about the workforce, then uh, actually we don't have that many workforce that will help the university to engage in this kind of a university social responsibility. So we have to rethink about that. And then we would like to see whether we will be able to, uh, um, to bring the student to work with the faculty member so that we will enlarge the numbers of the workforce. So when we have the student try to join us, then we would like to see how can we equip the student? How can we equip the student to have the ability that is required so that when we work on the university social responsibility, they have the ability to carry out this kind of work. So if we would like to equip the student to work with the faculty member, then the curriculum reform will be one of the major issues that we should worry about because traditionally the curriculum has a lot of compulsory courses, uh, some of the uh, selective courses, and maybe that are kinds of localized in some of the special topics only may not really be useful when we go out of campus to engage the student to the uh, the social project. So we certainly need some kinds of curriculum reform. So the university do have some of the reflection in this area that we should try to carry out some of the uh, reform in the curriculum so that we will be able to help the student uh, to carry out the task that we try to do in the university's social responsibility. So the university sort of like a making a transition from the UGSI concept to the university students' social responsibility. So this is the major transition or the whole idea that we have at National Pingdong University when we are going into the second phase of the higher education sprout project. Then we would like to switch to the 
student base or the student center idea of the university social responsibility. It is not only the university only, but also the student of the university. They have to join this kind of a social responsibility in order to carry out this kind of idea. So over here that when we try to do this, all right, the spirit of it is based mainly is of the student. The project is of the student, is for the student, and then is by the student. Okay, so with the spirit that we are talking about here, so then we should try to uh, sort of like uh, to to try to uh, categorize the the teaching resources that we have, and then what can we do so that we will have enough resources, teaching resources, and for the student. If we don't, then we have to invest more on the student okay and then the teaching unit uh, the teaching activity that we have as i just mentioned the teaching activity mainly is to equip the student equip the student with the competency to equip the student with the ability so that the student will be able to do the what we said is in the social responsibility and then in the end we we need the student to be the workforce to do the university student social responsibility so it is the student will be the one that is working on the implementation of the social responsibility by the student so this is the whole ideas of the university uh, that we are doing. So, all right, so now I would like to come to the USR project that we are working on at the National Pingdong University. As I have uh, shown here that the university, uh, the university, uh, the, the USR project that we are working on here uh, that I would like to show you is that currently the university have four USR projects. And I believe that National Pingdong University is one of the few university that have granted the four USR project in Taiwan. Most of this university probably have one or two USR project, but National Pingdong University have four USR project. And these four USR project, uh, this year, we won the silver medal our uh, uh, medal from the um, uh, from the organization that we are working on some uh, working on a project that fulfill the SDGs. So actually, the full project that we are working on, we do want the prize. Probably, I can show you the website of the university uh, over here that we see that we have the the uh, the four major the four major projects that we are working on, the USR project. And then the university also have three a seeding projects that we are working on, all right? So I think this is something that I would like to share with you. And it, it is related to the, uh, to the, to, to the, uh, uh, the USR project that we do. So the four major one is the pioneering education, all right, is the pioneering education. And this is the co-learning model in the remote areas of Pingdong. Because Pingdong is, uh, is in the southern part of Taiwan, and we do have a lot of indigenous people living in the mountain area. So in the remote areas of Pingdong, they do not have a lot of resources, educational resources for them. So uh, the university carry out a USL project with the remote, uh, with the schools in the remote area, so that we are trying to help the schools in the remote area. And then, of course, uh, in Pingdong, that we also have a lot of the dis disadvantaged people. So we try to do one project is that uh, we can try to 
help these disadvantaged people and to give them some kind of hope to change their life. Okay, so it is something that we do is starting from the hometown in the nearby area. And then we have the third one is the propelling the multicultural industry. And uh, this is something that we try to do the local creation products project with the local com community. And then the fourth one is the rocking the social mobility and trying to move the society and trying to move the community together with the university to uh, revitalize the, the local uh, community and so on. And then we have the seeding project. And today I would like to share with you was one of the projects that we have at the university is to restore the beauties of good, resources, recycle, and co-creation in society. Okay. So this is the this is the one that I would like to share with you. And uh, the the USR project, the restore the beauties of good, resources, recycle, and co-creation in society. So this is the project that we try to engage our students with the community. Nowadays, uh, probably many of you have just heard about uh, the latest uh, COP26 uh, held in England. Uh, it's talking about the conservations of the uh, earth. So I believe that this project is, I can say, is a part of that is to restore, uh, to recycle the goods. Because most of us know that quite a lot of things that we have, maybe with the, uh, with the uh, abundancy in, in our society, many of the goods that we have, once they, once they break down, quite a lot of time we throw it away directly. Uh, without thinking about recycling it. So over here, we are trying to see whether there is anything that we can try to recycle the goods, okay? Recycle the goods. So one of the group that we have is, is to engage our student with the community to restore to, or to repair the, uh, the the device that they have and then co to recycle it and then co-creation it all right so we are trying to see uh reflection on the consumer behavior and then try to make some correction of the people's daily habit as i mentioned people throw things away easily without thinking about like uh restoring it but I think over here we are trying to change, trying to change the pe the consumer's behavior, so that they don't throw things away at the first time. All right, they will try to think about it and then to see whether it is possible that we can recycle it or we can try to repair them. All right, and then we we try to do the explorations of the path of the resource recycled in the society and then mobilize the repairing skills of the student. So most of the student, not all the students are in the college of science or in the college of engineering and so on. And most of the student in the college of social science or liberal arts, they can also learn something simple skill, repairing skill so that they will be able to go to the community and to work with the community together. As you can see over here in the picture, that they work with the adults in the uh, com community so that they try to repair things. So I think this is another thing that we try to do. And with some preliminary result in 2020 that we do have the student, a six student from the Department of Social Development, they con conducted a repairing tool and workshop in Tainan area with the local community. And through their effort, 20 report we issue in the local publication. And then we also have the three bicycle repairing workshop executed using the lost and found bicycle 
on campus of National Pingdong University, and we we brought the bicycle to the local com community and do the repairing work, and so that after the repairman, that the re the bicycle can be reused by the local people. I think this is something that uh, we have done in the past, in the in in 2020. Now uh, we are getting close to the ends of uh, uh, 2021. So actually, that we do have some uh, result that we have in 2021. Okay, the 2021, uh, the National Pindong University team continued to organize seven repair workshop, um, repairing bicycle, electric fan hair dryer and electric cooker and so on. So each session will include introduction of some of the basic knowledge of the electrical appliance and tool and to help the student to understand the troubleshooting and a same pair, a simple repairing skill and maintenance that they should have so that they will be able to, to do the repair workshop. So actually a total of 131 uh, people at, participated in the workshop. Okay, and then uh, we help the student not only when they go out, on campus, we help the student to apply some of the project that is of the university's uh, annual uh, higher education sprout project so that the student can have their own, uh, their own group of learning on campus. So the student independence learning community project has been granted by the university uh, to the student who engage in this uh, university social responsibility. So this is something that we have done. And then uh, we we also uh, instructing the student, uh, encouraging the student to take some of the social enterprise course to to propose a campus uh, waste uh, reduction plan, so that through the course they learn uh, uh, on campus, and they can also apply the knowledge that they have on campus to help the university to have the waste reduction. Of course, after the implementations of the plan on campus, they can certainly, uh, with the experience that they have, they can go to the community and successfully uh, help the community to do something similar to this, okay? And also that we also help the student to uh, uh, participate in some of the cell reading project. And so that the student in the Department of Social De Development, they try to do a lot of reading of the, of the current knowledge that people are doing uh, especially, for example, for some of the books that they they have read, No Son Empty House, Life of the Urban Hunter, Gathering from Scratches, and some other books that is listed here. So I think we are trying to equip the student with the knowledge. And in the summer of 2021, the surveys of the Pino City Resource Recovery and Maintenance Industry were also carried out, right? So the future foresee that we are trying to have is to continue to conduct the uh, bicycle and the electrical apply, appliance repair shop to convey the concept of circular economy. I believe that most of the people understand the importance of the circular economics because this circular economics, oh, this circular economics is one of the major concepts that while we are talking about conservation of the earth, and this is something that is important, and it is responsible consumption to the teacher and student in the school. And then in adjunction with the course, the social enterprise and the public welfare in the innovation po program. We also conduct some of the field survey on the maintenance industry in the Pingdong city and accumulate data and seeking opportunity. So that the, the professor, so that the professor uh, uh, actually, they, they try to uh, work on something with the student so that they can try to build more, uh, more information on, on the, uh, the the re repair workshop with the student 
okay? And also we try to uh, try to collaborate with uh, other university and start starting uh, start planning to use some of the micro courses or micro credit and invite the national uh, Sun Yat-san University and trying to uh, have the courses together as a common project uh, and then help the student to form the Southern Repair Alliance and then hopefully that we will be expected to start some of the courses for the student from National Sun Yat-san University and also at National Pingdong University. All right. And then uh, we also work with the Department of Sociology at Sun Yat-sen University and also with the community in Tainan area, the community college, okay? And the alliance, the repair alliance continue to work over there with the uh, community college and then assisting the alliance to plan exhibition for the people over there in Tainan, all right? So uh, getting to the close, uh, to, to the ends of my talk. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to associate the university students' social responsibility with the SDG, educational goal, all right? So what we are trying to do is to offer better quality, higher quality education. So we try to offer the sustainable development goal number four, all right? to ensure the inclusive and uh, equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunity for all. So at the university, we try to offer the effective learning environment for the student and trying to help the student to have a better learning and then make sure that the student's engagement in the local community as a few experimentation for them so that what they learn on campus will be useful when they go on to the local community or even to the industry and then we try to provide the learning field in a lifelong perspective the student when they have the relationship, they work with the university faculty member. And then after they graduate, they can still have a connection with the university faculty member so that when the student finish their education in the university, they can still uh, come back to the university uh, to have some association with the professor. And then they can continue to learn more with the university professor professor. So I think this is some of the idea that we're trying to do and trying to help the student. So the final remark that I that we have concluded from the work that we have done in the past, that we try to promote the quality of teaching and innovation of teaching for the student and to ensure the possibility of uh, publicity of higher education to the student. Uh, because that some of the students uh, are from the disadvantaged uh, family. So the university, uh, through some kind of, uh, through some of the project, we try to ensure the student all have the opportunity to engage in the higher education. And then in the end, we try to fulfill the university social responsibility that we promised to do as a university 4.0 university and with the student that we will do better work in the university social responsibility so i think uh this is the final remark that i have uh, of the uh from the talk i would like to share with you today uh thank you for your attention and uh, i think later on we will have um, open discussion with people and later on that we can talk a little bit about it. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dean Zhen, for your comprehensive analysis of uh, and insightful comments concerning the uh, USR implementation uh, in National Pindong University. And uh, I certainly know that the education program and department is uh, quite strong uh, in, P in National Pindong University 
and it's quite noted uh, for uh, Pinto University's experience uh, in promoting uh, the University 4.0 uh, concept and com combining the SDG concept. Um, and of course, these, these projects are amazing uh, for helping the students in some of the remote areas, uh, indigenous people, uh, and to, you know, to revitalize the communities uh, and to uh, teach them about the uh, circular economy, uh, circular economy concept that's just uh, Professor Zhen just mentioned about the ongoing COP, uh, COP26 meetings. I think all of us have the uh, uh, responsibilities, especially for university, because we have uh, rich resources. And professor could lead uh, students to um, some of the field studies and helping uh, the communities and helping the uh, the students uh, who lacks of uh, rich natural resources. Okay, once again, I I do appreciate for. Uh, Dean Zhen's uh, outstanding, amazing speech. And uh, um, I think we can have a break time. And during the break time, please just leave your questions on the chat box and we can give some time for uh, Dean Zhen to, to look it over and to check which um, priority questions to be answered. Okay, thank you very much again, Professor Zhen. And let's have some proceed to a break time. If you plan to study abroad, you should consider studying at National Pingtung University. We believe that choosing our university will not let you down. National Pingtung University is located in Pingtung City, the southern part of Taiwan. It's new merged university in 2014, and it is birthed by National Pingtung University of Education and National Pingtung Institute of Commerce. It inherits the reach of teaching and research potential in the field of technology, vocational education, comprehensive higher education, and also normal education from two universities. NPTU is divided into three campuses, so students here can enjoy three times more learning resources. And here we have many facilities to make students more relaxed and more convenient, such as stadium, fitness center, sports area, and swimming pool, VR center, two libraries with a wide length of resources and materials, NPTU has a nature area to make you feel fresh. Wow, it all looks so great. So how many international programs do we have? Well, I'll let Christine to tell us more about it. Hi guys, NPTU has four international programs. International Master Program of Information Technology and Application. International Master Program of SDEM Education. International Master Program of Applied Science. International PhD program of applied science, and we have six college in National Pingtung University: College of Liberal Arts and Social Science, College of Management, College of Computer Science, College of Education, College of Science, College of Innovative and International. MBTU offers such a big scholarship to international students for how to apply National Pingtung University. You can contact us here. If you plan to study in Taiwan, our university will be a great choice to consider. We believe that MPTU will give you new experience, new culture, and new knowledge. Come and create your new impression here. National Pingtung University. Well, there are so many choices. Which university should I choose? Hey, what about National Pindong University? I just graduated from there, and I think it's the best choice for you. National Pindong University? Where is it? National Pindong University is located in Pindong City, the southern part of Taiwan. It's a newly merged university in 2014, and it's merged by National Pingtung University of Education and National Pingtung Institute of Commerce. It inherits the rich teaching and research potentials in the fields of technological and vocational education, comprehensive higher education and normal education from two universities. 
Therefore, MPTU is divided into three campuses. Students here are able to enjoy three times more learning resources. Less attractive. Why did you choose studying here anyway? Because MPTU offers such a big amount of scholarship, and the campus environment is quite good. For foreign students, you can totally focus on your studies. Wow, that sounds so perfect. Not only scholarship, but also various lectures. There are five colleges in MPTU: College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, College of Management, College of Computer Science, College of Education, and College of Science. Do they have any special facilities? Sure, we have VAR Technology Center, two libraries with wide range of resources and materials, stadium and fitness center. Wow, that's pretty nice. Do you know how to apply at National Hindu University? Of course, you can directly contact NPTU International Affairs Office or visit their website. I'm pretty sure they will provide any information you need. Okay. Thank you for your introduction. I can't wait to study in National Pino University. Okay. Um, thank, thank you, you for much, uh, the video clip. Yeah, that's thank right. You for sharing it's, that. uh, yeah, it's a promotional. Uh, videos from Pino University is quite beautiful campus. We have been there. Uh, we have the um, close um, relation with the uh, uh, MPTU, and I also uh, certainly welcome students if you want to go for further graduate studies. I think MPTU would be a good choice. <laughs> yeah, some of uh, most um, uh, mm. all the character that you see in the video, they are mm. our international students. Uh, one of oh. them, the one of the girl is from uh, Lithuania. Oh, one of the girl is from Lithuania. Lithuania. One is from Thailand. Uh, one is from uh, Vietnam. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think three, right or four. And then the guys are from Thailand. Yeah, two guys oh. are from Thailand. Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, we do. Uh, we we are starting to have a lot of uh, diversity. <laughs> of our student population now. Yes, I have witnessed uh, many uh, uh, students from all over the world yeah. uh, study in, in Pingdong. And nowadays, I think Pingdong city is a very vibrant and growing city. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and many attractions that uh, I think you will, uh, you'll feel very comfortable studying in Pingdong. And, well, and I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> it is great to live here in Pingdong because uh, yes. I think the local County government hmm. in the past few years they have done a lot of great work and hmm. so that uh, do a lot of promotion for the county so a lot of people like Pingdong so Pingdong has become one of the fast growing uh, uh, community in Taiwan. Yes, yes, yeah. and there's so many festivals um, yeah, and the, right. yeah, yeah. the tropical resort. Uh, yeah, Kanding is quite. Yeah, it's also National, in Kanding, Kanding. Uh, uh, Kanding National Park. Yes. National yes, Park. Yeah. It's quite close. Um, to, uh, but I think Pingdong we, has three campuses, right? Three campus. Actually, uh, I would say four because four. Uh, the oh. other one is most of the time people will not go there because that is an experimental field uh, nearby Kanding. So oh. uh, normally the student will not go there. Only student with or only uh, teaching activity with special purpose will visit there, because oh. that is in the uh, uh, nearby uh, Kanding area. Kanding area. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, thank you. I, I thank you for I'm, the promotion. <laughs> yeah. No problem. No problem at all. I mean, uh, I I think that's uh, we're giving more opportunities to. For students to explore the southern Taiwan's beauty. That's yeah. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, I think we have three questions um, coming up, and all right. Uh, yeah. Maybe we can uh, put it on by order. Yeah. Okay. We all have right. first question. 
I would like to know the overseas student engagement concerning the USR project in your university. All right. Okay. okay. So I think the uh, overseas student engagement, uh, as I mentioned over there, is that we do have the, I think we do have the uh, co-learning model in the remote uh, area mm. of Pingdong. So some of the international students, when they study in the College of Education, mm. they will have the opportunity to engage in that sort of, pro uh, in, in that sort of project. So of, of course, not all the students will engage in that because uh, different kinds of USR project is for different colleges. Uh, because the project uh, are led by the faculty member in certain uh, college. So mm -hmm. students in different college will engage in different sort of the USL project. Okay. So I have a follow-up question uh, after Mr. Wu. I mean, I, um, how, how would you attract students um, to participate actively in uh, USL projects? Do you have any... Um, Kind of incentives, or is this about the okay. course co okay. combination or something? Yeah. Let me see. Uh, mm. Well, uh, I think uh, maybe I, at the university now that w what we are trying to do, of course, is sort of uh, of fostering of the mentality of the student, so that the student will bear the ideas of the social responsibility so that no matter the international student whether they would like to stay here in taiwan and work in taiwan or they would like to go back to their home country then they have the social responsibility idea if they stay here in taiwan of course later on they will live in somewhere and then the, he or she will be in the community. And mm. with the social responsibility mentality they, they bear from the university, then the student will be able to help the community to do something. Or if they go back to their home country, of mm. course, they, they can uh, use the knowledge or use the experience they have here uh, in Taiwan so that they can help their uh, a local community in their home country. Yeah. Well, I think this is the kind of thing that we are trying to do. And uh, I I don't have the slide to, to show you is that actually the university, we are having a lot of reform in curriculum mm -hmm. so that the student actually, some of the, uh, some of the courses they probably don't need three credit hours or probably they don't need one credit hour. Huh. So we have the micro credit huh. so that a student, for example, I can, I, I can say that the student can join the bicycle repairing workshop. Let's say huh. that would be a three hours work. Huh. And then the student join that kind of, of micro credit courses they mm. probably will be able to go to that micro credit courses two times, three times. So they accumulate, let's say, nine hours. And then they probably accumulate another uh, waste recycle micro uh, credit, another, let's say, nine hours. So with the 18 hours the student accumulated in the micro credit course. So then the student can use these 19 credit hour to become one credit. Mm -hmm. I think in Taiwan, when the student will, uh, when student can earn one credit is that they have to study for 18 hours. So what we are trying to do is that the student can join this kind of micro credit course. So then they can accumulate uh, the, the, mm -hmm. the credit hours and then in if they have 18 credit hours, then they would get one credit. So I think we do have a lot of uh, curriculum reform in this way to help students to accumulate 
a lot of cross discipline uh, courses so that they can build a lot of different kind of knowledge that they they need for their future uh, work or for their future challenges. Yes, thank you very much. I think that's very it's wonderful for the curriculum reform is quite important. Uh, and this idea of micro credit is quite inspirational. And, Thank you very much. And, okay, yeah. and one thing that I would like to add is that mm. the university now have uh, all the colleges, mm. they offer, like uh, they, all the students are uh, entitled 20, uh, we, we, we call it 20 free credit. Mm. Okay, so that the student can choose courses from all different colleges. For example, student in the College of Science, they don't have to study everything in the College of Science. He or she can study something from the College of Education, College of uh, Social Science, and College of Computer Science, and so on. So at least every student can have 20 credit hours from different colleges. So I think this is this add a lot of flexibility to the student, so that the student can learn from uh, different colleges to yes, in yes. in to enlarge the base of knowledge. Yes, thank you very much. I think mm -hmm. it's a very good uh, inspirational uh, measures. Um, well, I, I think in, in NUK we're still trying to free out. Uh, they don't it's a free credit such <laughs> professor yeah, yeah, just yeah, mentioned yeah. but it is we are facing some of challenges so we can learn a lot of lessons uh from university thank you and and then we have a more, also three more questions so next one would be from adam yeah in the u.s there is a phrase liberal arts education which means learning a little bit about a broad range of topic before someone specialized what general education to, okay all right so now uh uh in the promotional uh, uh video clip that we have that you see we have the college of dao mountain all right and the monk uh dao Mount, uh college of dao mountain or mountain dao college this is the uh this is the college uh which offer the general education for the student uh, at National Pingdong University. So over here in the college that the student can choose from, from the courses offered by the College of Mountain Dao. And this is, uh, this is the center that we offer the general courses. Of course, that we don't, we don't have, uh, I think that in most of the Taiwanese university that we do, have a certain restriction on the, the the credit hour that you need to complete before your graduation. So all the general education that you probably would need to take uh, somewhere around uh, 24 to 30 credit hours before your graduation. So all the, these courses will be from the, the, the College of Mountain Dao or in a lot of the general education center in other university. So uh, we do offer a lot of things in that. Uh, I think we not only in the liberal arts education only, I think the, the, the general education is mean more in different area. And in addition to what I just mentioned, the, uh, the, the credit, the 20 credit hour that student can choose from different colleges. But the Mountain Dao uh, College is mainly for the general education subjects. Mm. I don't know whether that that uh, that answer your question or not, Adam. Okay. Or you, you. Like, is right. that clear to you, or you have anything else that you would like to ask? Uh, yeah, uh, I think was, they they just put the question on the ah, chat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now we have following. Well, several questions. Now, next one will be from Grish Evios. Okay. Uh, I think uh, at the moment that the university does not, uh, the university does not have a healthcare 
uh, uh, project uh, related to the COVID-19, all right? But I think in one of the USR project that I mentioned is that we try to help the disadvantaged people. I think in one of the slides that I show to, to you is that we, or to make life with hope, okay? The, the, the title of the uh, USR project is to make, uh, to make life difference with hope. And that is the USR project that we have is to, to go to the community to help the disadvantaged people because as we have seen the disadvantaged people in the community, no matter whether they have a, uh, a university diploma or not, they usually face a lot of difficulty uh, in their uh, daily living. And uh, uh, what, the, what the team try to do is to associate with the hospital in the local com community and try to reach out to the disabled people and try to help them so that they will be able to uh, engage in different kinds of things in the community so that they don't, they are not, I say that localized in their, inside their house only. So we try to take them out to different areas so that they can experience different kind of things. There is a number that I that I probably can show is that uh, in the Pingdong area, we probably we have um, somewhere around two thousand disabled people in this area, two thousand people, and most of the disabled people they. Uh, they are sort of confined in their house only. And they seldom have the opportunity to get out of their house and to have a lot of communication, personal communication or personal contact with the outside. So what we try to do is to help these disabled people and help them to go out and to set up some kind of activity for these disabled people so that they can have this sort of social contact with other people. So this will improve their, uh, their spiritual part of their living. So this is what we are trying to do in that uh, uh, social responsibility project. That may not relate it to the COVID-19, but I think it is related to the health care part of the people. Hey. Okay, thank you very much for uh, Dr. Zeng's uh, answering about, um, yeah. I think also, um, we, not, not only in Pingdong, I think even in Kaohsiung, we're facing the age population issues um so um yeah I, i'm not sure whether in, in Pindong university offers some of uh the community community university services for the age uh, senior citizens um uh, well uh uh we 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 don't have any project that is directly associated with the uh, senior citizen but I think with the with the one that uh, probably you can see down there with the slide that I have shown you is that to make life different with hope is caring start from hometown and and that idea is to help our student because we do have the student in the uh, College of Social Science and we do have a lot of student in the College of Education especially in the uh, psych psychological counseling in that way. And so that these students, they are willing to engage in this kind of social responsibility project. And so they can go into the community and to have a direct contact mm -hmm. with these senior citizens or with these uh, disabled people and to help them. So I think this is what we this is the project that we have that we are working with with the, the, these people. Yeah, thank you. 
Um, I, do we have any other coming up questions? No. Okay, I have uh, maybe last questions probably uh, for Dr. Chen is about um, you, in your slides you just mentioned about um, the social enterprises that's quite uh, attracts me uh, and, and impress me. So do, can you um, give us some example uh, in National Pindo University that you, the students and professors when they work for USR projects and um, probably they could establish social enterprises uh, in the long run, even after the graduation. The okay. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, when we talk about some of these things that we do is that we try to associate uh, the university. Uh, we, we try to associate the university with, with the industry, with the uh, enterprise, uh, social enterprise. I think probably, I, a personal experience that I have is that I try uh, because one of my uh, classmates, uh, a high school classmate, that he owned a company mm -hmm. and is in biomedical engineering. So I try to have association in research with the company, and so that I sent my student over there to the company to have some uh, practicum and so that the student can use the knowledge that the student learn on campus and trying to uh, uh, help the uh, help the company to make some kinds of uh, I would say improvement in some of the some of the work that they are working on for example uh, one of the things that we do is that we use the technology that we have in the Department of Physics, and we try to help them to do the testing of their sample so that they can save a lot of money. Because in the past, the company will always have to go to the SGS for mm -hmm. some of the sample testing. Testing. So every time it costs, let's say, uh, 30,000 NT to 50,000 NT every time. Mm. But with the, with the method that we have in the lab, that we probably can reduce the, the cost, let's say, to less than 5,000, 3,000 one time. Wow. But we can sort of use the result that we have to do the comparison from the previous result from the SGS so that we can show them that from the technology, from the message that we offer to the company, we can still have the same result to ensure that what we have on campus is, is also very effective in determining the quality of the sample. So through this kind of collaboration with the outside industry, so yeah. our students get the opportunity to work with the company and hopefully that in the future, if our student uh, graduate from the university, then our student will be able to work in the company. And I think that would be something is, I would say, is the win-win situation for the industry and then for the university because to me, I think one of the major uh, major uh, goal of the university is to help the student, equip the student with the ability to help the student to get the competency in acquiring a job when they finish their education. So I think through this sort of work that. I believe my student have that kind of connection with the company and then will be able to hire by the company. So I think that is something that I think is, is good for the student and also for the for the uh, for the industry as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, Dr. Zen's uh, amazing uh, lectures and all the answers and uh, supplements. So do you have any others want to make some uh, ads or comments? Um, uh, well, uh, yeah. 
uh, I think I think uh, I don't know the background. <laughs> I don't know the background of the student uh, who who are currently listening to this broadcast. But I think uh, to me, I think it is always important for the student to get involved in different kinds of things. Mm. Uh, uh, Cross discipline learning is the future train in education so all the students no matter that you are in in certain area let's say in the college of social science then you should try also to have that sort of knowledge in different area let's say with the programming of of com computer programming or you should also have some knowledge in what we now understand, uh, let's say, the STEM education and so on. So I think you should not limit yourself to a certain area. So as in the beginning, I mentioned to you is that the STEM for 2025, they offer a huge change in education. The scope of education actually is now expanding much, much more beyond the university. So I hope that the student can have that kind of uh, awareness that you are not only limited to the campus of the university. You should try to broaden your view and try to broaden your your uh, fields of study in the future. Yeah. And that will be something good for the student. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Dance. And I totally agree with your ideas of uh, interdiscipline, uh, cross-discipline studies and explore yourself uh, and do your service in, in the communities. And you will know um, how to uh, promote and, and increase your values after graduation. Thank you very much. Um, right. uh, okay. I, I think thank you. There, yeah, thank you very much. I, because I think it's, there, there's no more questions coming up. so. Uh, and it's about the time, so I, I would say that uh, uh, is the uh, the experience of USR in National Pindo Universities and the ideas uh, of of MPTU is quite admirable, um, and it's it's these are the very good models for other university to to learn the lesson from. Thank you very much. I do thank appreciate you. that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Thank bye, you. bye. Yeah. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye bye. Yeah. Uh, and all the participants uh, online, thank you very much for your participations and, and thank you for uh, Dr. Zen's lectures. Um, and next, we will have um, Dr. Shidhar Sakar uh, Kabar uh, from the uh, Rajalambu Institute of Technology of India. Uh, he's going to give out the, uh, the speech uh, concerning the green transportation. Uh, I think this is a very interesting, uh, it's an interesting topic, especially when, when we all seek for uh, the net zero uh, emissions uh, society. Um, so um, I, we look forward uh, for Dr. Kamhar's uh, speech. And I, I also would like to uh, encourage all students and participants in our Asia Virtual Academies uh, to, 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 uh, to participate in the, the lectures. Okay, thank you very much again, and I will see you next week. I appreciate that. Okay, bye-bye.